Paul Lapolice joins us from the CFL on TSN. Lapo, thanks. Been a while. Um, if you don't mind, can we jump right to it? They want to know what's wrong with the Bombers. No one would know better than you. What's your answer to that? Uh, well, I think uh, uh, the first thing I would say is they've played the Grey Cup champs, tw- and, you know, that was, uh, they got beat pretty good. Then they lost to BC's, probably maybe the second or third best team in the league. Uh, they didn't play great against Ottawa and lost a close game. And then Calgary beat them in overtime. So they've played some good people. Uh, they haven't played great. And they've, they're going through a bunch of injuries. So a couple of weeks ago on the panel, somebody said, oh, they're going to make a bunch of changes. And I said, what changes? There are, all the changes are on the field. They have a bunch of new receivers right now playing that I don't even know who these guys are. And you've got some change. Liam Dobson, a first starter up front. Uh, uh, Lofton is a younger starter up for the O-line. So they have some things they're working through. And, you know, the whole receiving goal. You lose Kenny, Shaw, uh, Kenny, uh, Kenny Lawley, Dalton Schoen, that's going to hurt. So they, they're working through some stuff. And quarterback's got to play better. And we'll see what happens now that Straveler gets, probably gets a start this week. But they just got to, you know, they're working through some stuff. And they got to handle it. Well, do we, I've said this to Barker, I'll say it to you, do we not overreact in this opening third? Teams that are not as good as their record and some aren't as bad as their record. As you know, this is still an extension of the preseason to me, in my mind. Well, I spoke to a couple of their coaches before the game and not that they need to hear my opinion at all. I trust Osh knows what he's doing from a consistency standpoint of Telling the players, this is what you got to do to win the game. This is what you got to do better. Trying to be as consistent as you can with the players. But one thing I told one of the players and a coach was like, listen, you have to educate your players and your teammates that this is normal in the CFL. It may not be normal for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers for the past four years. So the players just have to kind of get out of that funk of, oh, my God, are we that bad? You're not. You haven't played great and you've played some good people. You got to perform better. So I think there's probably maybe a little culture shock over there. That team has lost, Rod, one game every year. They, you know, they at home they've been eight and one for the past four straight years. Unheard of. So they're kind of going through some stuff other teams will go through. Maybe not four losses in a row, but they're going through some things that they've got to, you know, buckle down, play some younger players, and find ways to win. I could talk about them all day, but Friday's game, Ottawa at Winnipeg, you're sitting there in Ottawa. Can, I had A.J. Jakubik on yesterday. I said, are the Red Blacks back? And he goes, I can't say just yet that they're back. But they got a pretty exciting young quarterback in Drew Brown. What do you think of this guy? Well, you know, I think uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, when I watched all Drew's passes against Winnipeg, I thought he did a really good job distributing the football. And I thought, you know, when he didn't take a lot of shots downfield because there weren't a lot of shot opportunities downfield. But the one thing he did is Zach Kolaris threw two interceptions and he threw zero. And that's why they won the football game. So, you know, you're asking your quarterback, especially a young one, to make sure, yes, we need you to push the ball downfield. We need you to make plays. But we also need, especially the young guys, don't put ourselves in bad situations. And that's been the case for Ottawa since Trevor Harris last. There have been just so many young quarterbacks with me, with uh, you know other ple- people. So you just got to – that's what I commend Drew Brown about. He's done a nice job of protecting the football, and, and that's going to be needed again. That's what Winnipeg needs to do. Well, the quarterbacks, uh, there's a reason we talk about them. If you don't have one, you don't win, as you know. And so Thursday's game, Toronto with Sask. I'm, I'm sure you've read the game notes. Cameron Dukes, 3-2 and two as a starter now. Shea Patterson making his first career start. Um, all the numbers, by the way, are leading to an Argo win. Maybe that's why they're favored. I don't know. What's your read on this game? Well, I, I would say this. The, the one thing I was impressed with, and, and I, I, did a, I did a playbook on it this week, is defensively what they've done, and I thought Corey Mace has done a really good job of bringing his culture of defensive takeaways over to Saskatchewan. Last year, they led the CFL 52 takeaways in Toronto on defense when Corey was the D.C. Well, this year through three games, if you go last week's stat, they were second in the league behind Montreal with nine takeaways. That's three takeaways per game. So if they can do that, help Shea Patterson with a young quarterback, give him a short field or score on defense, 
that's what they've been successful for because they were out of that game in Edmonton. Edmonton, they were losing until they started getting some takeaways in the fourth quarter. Um, so I, I think that's going to be important. And certainly having some type of run game for Shea Patterson and whether it be run game from him or from, you know, the, the offensive line and AJ, uh, just to, to take some pressure off him. Because Cameron Dukes doesn't seem to make a lot of mistakes. You know, he's the thing you worry about Cameron Dukes is can he take the shots downfield? They've been very conservative. They haven't pushed it downfield. They got behind last week, and then it was kind of hard to see him make plays downfield. And, you know, but he's protected the ball for the most part. Tell us, uh, if you don't mind, Lapo, uh, in the time we have left, we can go back to these other games if we have time, but what's up with you and your life? you got some pretty exciting things going on, uh, if, if, I, if I dare say, in the media world of this. Jim Barker will never refer to himself as a media person. I'm not sure if you want to either, but you got some cool stuff coming down the pipe. Uh, so, well, I'm doing a couple of, like, so I'm doing, I'll be on this. So I've been doing some more sideline reporting and that's just because I'm filling in for Matthew Sheehanetti as he's gone when we will give it back. So, uh, that's been kind of neat to be on the sidelines to games and be able to watch. I'll be at the sideline for, I believe Hamilton, BC. Uh, I got a couple color, uh, commentaries coming up next month. I'll be doing color for a couple of games and, uh, yeah, I just been posting stuff on YouTube and I, I talked to an old writer quarterback in the off season, JT O'Sullivan, who played for the riders in 12 and he has a he has a good uh youtube page that does called the quarterback school breaking down stuff so after talking to him i posted a bunch of stuff last year at the end of the year i said you know let me do a let me make a concerted effort to post more as i watch all the film i was watching calgary winnipeg this morning i'm going to watch montreal this afternoon i take some notes and if something comes up that i could teach and impart knowledge i do i'll kind of record it and post it up on youtube so yeah it's been good it's been a lot of fun people seem to like it where can they find your YouTube account? Because there are people going to be rushing there. Uh, Coach Lapo. Yeah, it's just Coach Lapo. There you go, YouTube. everybody. At YouTube, just Coach Lapo. Mm -hmm. and, and he's putting his stuff on Twitter, too. But I got to ask you this about that media side of things. When you realized it's different, right? Because you remember 2011? You guys went up against those BC Lions in the Grey Cup, and I predicted a double-digit Lions win. You shook my hand the day before the game. I thought you were going to rip my arm off. You were so mad. You probably don't even remember. And I'm like, Lapo, I got to make a I prediction, know. Lapo. And I now know. you, you yeah. don't remember? It's bothered me ever since. <laughs> now, what? Don't worry <laughs> about it, buddy. This... I know it's your job. You got a job, I got a job. <laughs> when, when did you realize that the media side ain't all peaches and gravy sometimes? Well, I, 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 the one thing I think, you know, and I did it for three or four years, 10 years ago, I think sometimes the, co the coaches or everybody in the league has to have an understanding. Without a media, we don't have a league. And we want more people covering our teams. We want more people talking about the teams. That's what good media is. I heard one story one time a coach had said, Oh, this league is great. This this game is great if you only played it in like an empty stadium where you didn't have to deal with all the other stuff. And I'm like, whoa, how fun is that? That's terrible. And you're you're gonna go bankrupt. So I think, yeah, you have to have an understanding that those two things work together. Like the onside punt thing everybody's talking about, that's been going all over the US. And some people, oh, is it gimmicky, this or that? I don't know if it's gimmicky or not, but it keeps people talking about the Canadian Football League. So you need people talking about our league. We need more people breaking down our league, talking about it, and, and enjoying the great league we have. Yeah, can you be the bridge to that? Because Cortez is like that. I'm like, George, not only, he doesn't ever want to talk to anybody. He just wants to coach football. And I'm like, George, you've got so much to, 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 to offer if you would do these interviews, but they just don't like doing it. So thank God we got people like you that, uh, that do. Well, you know, if you really don't like that part of the game, that's okay, but don't ever try to become a head coach. Don't ever try, you know, like you just, that's part of your job as a head coach. And you're, so you, you know, if you want to be a coordinator or a position coach, you'll have very limited dealing with the media, which is, it might be right up your alley, but don't, don't, go to the session of a general manager or head coach and say, well, I don't really, well, that's part of your job. You have to be part of the media. You know, it's part of your selling your organization and your league. Yeah, no kidding. Lapo, wonderful chat. Can't wait till we do it again. Enjoy the games. 
Hey, Rod, great, great seeing you. Great thing. Have a good summer in Saskatchewan for you. Looking forward to it. Thank you, pal. Uh, looking forward to it. I hear you doing a lot of radio stuff. It's good. All the baseball stuff is great. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. Paul Lapolis for the CFL on TSN.